Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What's going on, buddy? My name is Zell Prince. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, today, I got another video by Technology, and it is the British American War of 1812, explained in the 13th. Uh, like the last video I reacted from him, I know, knew nothing of the, that particular war that took place. And another, this is another war I know nothing about. It's the War of 1812, when the British and the Americans fought each other again. About, let's say, nearly 40 years after the Revolutionary War. I don't know what led to it or the most about it. All I know from the war is that the British burnt down the White House. That's literally all I know. <laughs> and this war was never taught in my classes. None of them. Throughout kindergarten, middle school, high school, and college. Even college never went over it. And I don't know why. But with that being said, guys, as I like being a history lover, not find the right word, but in that one sentence, I am going to react to this video and learn a little bit about the War of 1812, because I know literally nothing about it. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy and three. One. In 1812, the young nation of the United States took on the country with the most powerful navy in the world in a war that would affect more than just the former colonies and their colonizer. The United States of America first gained freedom from the British in an eight-year-long revolutionary war that finally came to a close when Britain inevitably recognized the independence of their 13 former colonies on September 3rd, 1783. One of the most relevant impacts wow, of this so, war... So, almost 40 years apart. I was off by one year. <laughs> I was off by one year that would fuel future tensions between the U.S. and Britain once again was the role of the Native American. No, it was 30 years, my bad. Not 40. And as a fan of our channel, you should check out our friends over at Curiosity Stream. Uh, this is my personal favorite streaming service, a place where I can watch thousands of supported the when you sign up and get 25% off your yearly subscription. During the revolution, the Native Americans mostly supported the Brits, who they hoped would continue to restrict expansion from the U.S. settlers into Native American territory. Never when happened. Britain failed to maintain its rule over the colonies. The United States eventually accelerated its takeover of Native land, causing even more friction between the American societies. This friction only grew stronger as the years went on, as Britain remained a driving force of the discord since not only had the Natives taken its side Native. in the revolution, but the British also openly encouraged the Native Americans to fight back against their antagonists. By 1812, this, combined with a few other factors, led to the development of a new war. While the United States was clearly unhappy with the united opposition from Britain and the natives, they were also infuriated by allegations that the Royal Navy was utilizing a tactic known as impressment to take U.S. Pressment? men for their own troops. On top of this, 
the ongoing strife between Britain and France had a notable impact on the United States. Heavily locked really? in their own struggle, the warring nations tried to restrict trade from neutral countries and punish anyone who attempted to ignore the constraints. This. Oh, yeah, United that's States. right. Britain and Napoleon. The United Kingdom and France were at war with each other around the time. And I had a. F and I remember a little bit from the Napoleonic Wars that I watched from Oversimplified. America trying to say, well, stay neutral out of it because it wasn't their war, but it had something to do with them. I didn't realize it had something to do with the War of 1812. Well, not directly with the War of 1812, but maybe leading up to it? States in a detrimental position due to their inability to continue trade with either nation unless they wanted to risk invoking the wrath of the other side. While France took a more laid-back approach to ensure the U.S. abstained from doing business with the British, the latter was more aggressive about the matter. Yeah. On January 7th, 1807, Britain issued an order in council stating, It is hereby ordered that no vessel shall be permitted to trade from one one port to another, both which ports shall belong to or be in the possession of France or her allies, or shall be so far under their control as the British vessels may not freely trade. Furthermore, any ships that refuse to obey these restrictions would be subject to seizure by the Royal Navy, cargo and all. By November, the original order was expanded, now to include all the ports and places of France and her allies, or of any other country at war with His Majesty. Right, because that's when Napoleon was cutting off all trade with uh, Britain. That much I do remember. And all other ports or places in Europe. And basically, if anybody traded with the French or any of our allies back then, the Britain, British just attacked them. I mean, the British, the British were so aggressive back then. From which, although not at war with his majesty, the British flag is excluded and all ports or places in the colonies belonging to his majesty's enemies. In retaliation, France under the command of Napoleon Bonaparte issued the Milan Decree, which said that Milan. every ship to whatever nation it may belong that shall have submitted to be searched by an English ship or to a voyage to England or shall have paid any tax whatsoever to the English government is thereby and for that alone declared to be denationalized to have forfeited the protection of its king and to have become English property. Adding on, huh. Napoleon declared that any of the aforementioned ships that enter French ports or those of French allies are good and lawful prizes of his nation. Forced to reply, U.S. President Thomas Jefferson signed the Embargo Act in December of 1807, blocking all international trade from American ports and taking direct aim at Britain. Unfortunately for America, the act huh. backfired and turned the U.S. Yeah. into more of a victim than anyone else. Emphasizing this point, the minister to France himself even said, Here it is not felt, and in England it is forgotten. The effects of the Embargo Act ultimately pushed the U.S. into an economic depression, and it had to Eesh. be repealed less than two years after the initial signature. And it seems like it was like an early variation of the Great Depression, but instead of no work, it was just bad for the economy. In its place, the Non-Intercourse Act was passed, which directly forbade trade with Britain and France and their colonies. When this new act still proved to be ineffective, the United States tried once again, this time passing Macon's Bill No. 2 in May of 1810. This bill lifted trading bans and stated that if either France or Britain removed their own restrictions, the U.S. would re-establish an embargo with the opposing nation. By August, Napoleon enacted a plan to exacerbate tension between Britain and the United States, and it ultimately worked. He first told the new president, James Madison, that he intended to exempt the U.S. from his previously established Berlin and Milan decrees, promoting Madison to bring back the Non-Intercourse Act constraints. Berlin decree proclaimed that the British declared to be in, in a state of blockade. State all come. Bonds or community. Jesus. Mears with Great Britain. British subjects found in the territory of France or its. 
be arrested as prisoners of war and all British goods or merchants. Milan decree was issued in 1807 by Napoleon. I of France, I of first or first of France, denied to me. To enforce the, to enforce the 1806 Berlin decree, the goal was to defeat, defeat the British by waging economic warfare. That I do remember, because Napoleon was the master at land warfare, but Britain ruled the war, ruled the waves. With Britannia, one of the strongest naval fleets of the world. Of the world that I, at least that I know. I'm still learning a lot about history, guys. Against Britain in November of that year, despite the fact that Napoleon never actually followed through on his proclamation, Britain and the United States were now on the brink of, of war. Out war. The final straw came when the Battle of Tippecanoe unfolded in late 1811, as the U.S. troops claimed victory over the Native Americans, wishing to stop further expansion once again. Given the United States was fairly confident in the belief that the British were supplying the natives with weapons from Canada, a faction of the U.S. Republican Party known as the Warhawks began a heavy push towards an official declaration of war. At last, on June 18, 1812, President James Madison signed the Declaration Against Britain, despite contention about the issue coming from both the House and Senate. Another yeah, problem emerged as well when problems. Britain decided to suddenly repeal their trade restrictions before news of the U.S. declaration of war actually reached the British over a month later. Aware really? This delay, yeah, Britain well, it did, it did take not wrong button. It took a long time for them to, for news to travel from one end of the world to the other. It took a long time to immediately respond to the call of war and waited to see how the Americans would react to their repeals. When the U.S. got wind of this surprising development, they were, in turn, unsure of how the Brits would react to their declaration of war. Ultimately, the United States decided to follow through on its proclamation and did so by invading Canada, which was a British colony at the time. Yeah. While the American troops hoped to capture Canadian land to force Britain into negotiation, they had no such success. No one was prepared for war. The British and French have been busy fighting their own battles, and the U.S. military was grossly ill-suited to take on yeah. the rights of Britain. The because after the, the Revolutionary War, the military was decreased by a significant amount. Not as it is today, but back then, the George Washington's idea was to keep the United States out of war and by keeping good relations with foreign countries. But by the war of time of eight of the war of 1812, US army was nowhere near ready for any kind of out, all out warfare. Not at all. Technology was bad. There wasn't, there was barely any use of uniforms and and was very scarce back then. Just to name a few things, the American army back then. No, the America, the, can't speak. The United States did not want to go to war with anyone at all. So it did not mobilize its army as efficiently as it should have during that time and era. They didn't. And I guess the United States would have never, I guess, I guess this whole war wouldn't have happened. I don't know what else to say. I know I'm a little, a little bit confusing because I don't even know what, I, what kind of point I was trying to make there. But my point stands. The United States was not ready and not willing to go to war with anyone. And the military pretty much sucked. Put it that way. Defeats were plenty and humiliating for the Americans. One excessively humbling loss for the U.S. happened when General William Hull surrendered Fort Detroit on August 16, 1812, and his own army to the British troops, and allowed Michigan Territory to be deemed as part of Britain. Chased across the Canadian border, as Hull saw the size of his opponent's forces, which was a mix of British and Native American troops, and knowing that his daughter and grandchild were in 
and the fort, he decided to give up without a single shot being fired. Hall's really? disgraceful failure led to an uptick in Native American raids in the Northwest and British conflict under the command of Major General Henry Proctor. Adding insult to injury, U.S. Brigadier General Henry Dearborn struggled to make any progress on the Northeastern Never border heard of Henry because Dearborn. the militias in New England were not supportive of the war and uninterested in coming together for an attack on Montreal. By October, the Americans were finally able to get some momentum as Major General Stephen von Rensselaer led an army of 3,100 militiamen into the Battle of Queenston Heights. Rensselaer sent some advanced units across the river where they were able to hold their ground for some time on a slope just above Queenston and were successful until they were overcome by British forces as the rest of the American troops refused to join the fight. 925 U.S. soldiers were then captured by the British despite Eesh. Major General Isaac Brock on the British side being killed during the battle. Yet again, the Americans took another hit in 1813 yeah. when attempts to retake Detroit resulted in a massacre of U.S. United States was not at all prepared. We were not ready to go to war. I don't know what Mr. Jefferson was thinking back. Who is the president? No, it wasn't John Jefferson, was it? Prisoners by oh. Native American opponents. On top of that, Brigadier General Henry Dearborn was replaced by Major General James Wilkins. At long last, though, in James September Wilkinson. of 1813, U.S. Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry scored a major naval victory at Lake Erie against the forces of British Captain really? Robert Barclay and opened the gates for more success on the American side. When the Battle of the Thames erupted the following month, the U.S. finally defeated the British and Native American allied forces. The huh. next spring season, at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend, a U.S. militia force faced off with a Native American force known as the Red Sticks and found victory once again, demanding that the losing side cede roughly 23 million acres of land, which would later become Alabama and span partially into Georgia. Another huh. win for the United States followed in the summer, July of 1814, at the Battle of Chippewa, but it was short-lived as the Battle of Lundy's Lane ended in a bloody stalemate shortly after, forcing the Americans to withdraw. The real deciding factor in the war came when Napoleon faced his first exile, allowing Britain to shift more focus to the discord with the United States. The British oh. sliced through the U.S., destroying government buildings, including the White House. Yeah, that's when they burned down the White House. By 1812 was, was around the time that Napoleon was exiled. Forgot about that. That's when Napoleon lost against pretty much everyone in Europe. Of Washington, D.C., the Brits then tried to push farther into Baltimore by September under the authority of General Robert Ross, but were repulsed at the Battle of North Point, where General Ross was killed. In the hmm. battle that inspired the U.S. national anthem, more British troops were fought really? at Fort McHenry. As these conflicts raged on, peace talks began in Ghent and eventually resulted in a signed treaty on December 24th, 1814. Still, Ow. just as with the declaration of war, the news was delayed and took until February 18th, United Netherlands today in Belgium be ratified and ends the war. The Treaty of Ghent reverted things back mostly to how they were before the combat with a status quo antebellum. All territory was returned. Britain repealed their trade restrictions, stopped supporting the Native American revolts. This leaves me with one question. Was this the last war the United States and Britain went up against? The last time they went up against each other? If that's so, then the United States and Britain haven't fought each other for over 200 years. Yeah. 210 years. Actually, no, not 210 years. 200 and it ended in eight years, roughly. There's something else. If the, I'm actually going to look it up actually after this video. See which side. Well, if it was the last time the United States and Britain went up against each other, I'll look that up and ended their impressment strategies. In the end, 
the war was essentially a draw, and the only real losing side was the Native Americans, who had high hopes for British help in stopping US expansion. Britain was able to claim victory against the French, and in a way, against the US. Meanwhile, the US had the pride of more or less winning their second war of independence. Hmm. Okay. Now I know a little bit more as to why the War of 1812 happened. Because I knew absolutely nothing up to this point. But with that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like and subscribe, all that stuff, guys. And I will see you next reaction video. Bye.